the visions that the Lord had given me at the beginning of the year. It was the first week, and they were a week apart. Hallelujah. And those visions have went over and over in my head. And I said, Lord, I said, this is going to come forth in such a magnitude. And the reason I know that it is, because the first vision that I seen, and I saw that big funnel, and I mean it was in size and magnitude and in force, just like an F5 tornado. That thing was just huge. And I was standing there looking at it. And as that thing was coming toward, hallelujah, not toward me exactly, but coming toward where I was standing. And when I looked and beheld before it got to me, this locomotive come out of the whirlwind, and it was so fast, it was like it was going 200 miles and plus. And when that locomotive come out, it went past me just like that. And my head went just like that. And I looked. And then when I looked like that, hallelujah, then I saw Jesus upon the cross. Hallelujah. And this big gush of wind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It come against the back of the cross. Hallelujah. And it was standing straight up. And that cross went just like that. But I tell you what, that cross held. It did not fall to the ground. Hallelujah. And the Lord spoke to me. Hallelujah. He said persecution is going to be let loose upon my people in the year 2010. And he said it's going to become worse. And it's going to come forth in such a magnitude. And such a force. Hallelujah. He said, tell my people to get prepared. To get prepared. Because we are children of light. We are not children of darkness. And he does not tell us these things to put fear in our heart. Because we do not fear man. We fear God. And I tell you what, God will keep his people. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that some of us will not be martyred for his name. Because some of us will. Who? I don't know. But I tell you what, I believe that if God takes us that way, will God be the glory. Hallelujah. I, I feel like, just like Sister Blakely does. Hallelujah. If God's going to take me, I'd rather go out being a martyr than going by the way of sickness. Hallelujah. I'd rather die a death that would glorify my Father. Hallelujah. Than going out with the plague of Egypt. Hallelujah. And that's not taking anything from God's people that have suffered that way. Hallelujah. But I'm just saying what my preference is. And I'm sure their preference was too. But I tell you what, God, he does in different ways and different lives. And what we have according to our faith. According to our faith. Hallelujah. I have never seen the church in the place that it is in now. They have lost their faith. They have. They have lost their faith. Hallelujah. I remember the last few services I've had outside of the church here. And I could just feel the doubt that was in God's people. Not sinners, but God's people. And when you want to pray for somebody, hallelujah, that old spirit of doubt would come in so strong. Hallelujah. I tell you what, you'd have to take time to rebuke that old spirit of, rebe of doubt out of the minds and hearts of the people. And I'll tell you what, you know, used to, I remember, Sister Pam, that when a man or woman of God was praying for somebody in service, the people of God was reaching out with them. They were praying and reaching out to God, standing there, binding their faith together. That's why God moved in the way that he did. But God's people have lost their perception. They cannot perceive what God is trying to do. They don't have no discernment in their heart. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I thank God for keeping my discernment and keeping my perception on track. And it ain't putting no glory on me. It's God. It's God that keeps us in this. And it's because that we pray and ask Him to keep us and to bring us into that place. And he is steadily working with them that will hear and receive. Them that will hear and receive, he is steadily working to them to bring them what? Perfect their spirit and bring them into the fullness of the statue of the Son of God. And I tell you what, God is going to do just that. 
He is going to perfect the people. It's a remnant out of a remnant. Because so many are so caught up in the things of this life. I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about just in the things of this life. Running to and fro. Hallelujah. When they could be at home praying. Or if they do go. Go with a direction. Hallelujah. Lord, use me. Lord, as I'm out and about today. Lord, use me to glorify your name, Jesus. Somewhere, some way. Hallelujah. Just give me a word to say, God, that will bless somebody. And that will be a strength and an encouragement. You know, the Lord don't mind us getting out and taking care of our business. Of course not. But as we go, let us go in the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. As you notice in the Bible, everything that Jesus did, whether he was taking care of things in the natural or whether he was going forth just in the complete will of God, he was doing it in the mind of the Father. Hallelujah. To be used of him. To bring what for us? To bring forth the Word of God. I want to tell this other vision before I get on into the message. But the other vision I seen about a week later. Hallelujah. It started out. Now these are vivid colored visions. Just like a big HD view TV screen. Hallelujah. I tell you the Lord, He does things up like <laughs> He don't need all these old electronics to do what he wants to do. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, I was just pondering on the word and just pondering in prayer. It was after prayer. And I seen this big body of water. It's just as blue as it could be. And I tell you what, I saw the cross. This time I was standing in front of the cross. But this big body of water come up behind the cross. And it come on about where the shoulders were that Jesus was. About where that cross, it goes sideways. And it come down on it. Hallelujah. And I saw the cross again go just like this. But it held. It held. It did not just. The, and I reason I believe that the Lord is showing that it moved just a little. Hallelujah. It's because of the force that the devil is going to come against the church. Hallelujah. And that big wall of water would have done anything else in. Hallelujah. But the cross, it could not move. Hallelujah. It could not bring it down. Because I tell you what, Jesus Christ will cause us to stand in this hour. He not only will cause us to stand, but we stand against the wiles of the devil. And right after that, I seen the cross, and Jesus wasn't on it. Hallelujah. But it was just a cross there, and it was flaming with fire. A consuming fire had enveloped it. But it was not destroying the cross. It was just enveloped in fire. Hallelujah. And then after that, I seen the cross again. And I mean, it was glowing with the most luminous glow. Hallelujah. That, and the Lord spoke to me and he told me, he said, yes, the church is going to go under great persecution. Hallelujah. But he said, they are going to go through the fire. And he said, I am going to purify them. I am going to get the dross out of their life. Hallelujah. I'm going to separate the chaff from the wheat. And he said, I'm going to bring them forth in my glory. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, if you'll notice when Jesus was speaking to the disciples, hallelujah, and telling them about things that was fixing to happen to him, hallelujah. And I tell you what, when the Lord was talking to the Father later on, he said, Lord, it is time, Father, that you should glorify yourself in me. Glorify yourself in me that I might glorify you. And that's what God is going to do in this hour. Hallelujah. He is going to glorify his self in the church. And it's going to bring forth great persecution. But I tell you what, we're no greater than our master. His name was cast out as evil. He was hated. And he said, he said, <laughs> he said, don't let this discourage you. This is paraphrasing. He said, don't let this discourage you. He said, they hated me before they hated you. He said, but because you are my children, they're going to hate you. The world loves his own. And you are not of the world. But you are of me. Hallelujah. I tell you, I love the Lord. I want us to turn to 
Second John chapter 14. Thank you, Jesus. I've had several messages going on in my head. But this is what I feel like God wanted me to bring forth. The Lord is giving me a great word. Hallelujah. In Revelation. But I tell you what. When God gives me all of it, that's when I'll preach it. But he give it to me in part. It's like seeing through a glass darkly, just like Paul said. We see a little here and a little there. Hallelujah. Not much longer. I'll tell you what, God will bring it together and make a hole out of it that we can see the whole thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love the Lord, how he moves and how he works. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, move in this service. Father, anoint my vessel. Refresh my anointing. And God, Lord Jesus, open a door of utterance unto me to speak this word, Lord, by the unction of the Holy Ghost. Because, Lord, I can do nothing in myself, but I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Father, I'm asking you to move for your body. Move for the people, Father. Lord Jesus, this is a body move that you're going to move in this last day, God. And, Lord Jesus, it's going to take great persecution. Lord Jesus, to bring us forth in the manner that you desire. But, Lord Jesus, we serve you, Lord, most holy and righteous, Father. And, Lord, I know that you will keep your people. Lord Jesus, I love you and I praise you. And I thank you, Lord. Lord, I trust you, Father. I abide in you. And, Lord, you abide in me. And, Father, I thank you, Jesus, that you answer prayer. Lord, I thank you, God, that you have looked down and been merciful, Father. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Father. Father, perfect us in you. Lord, bring us forth. Help us to grow. God, and come forth, Lord, and be more and more like you, Jesus. Holy Lamb of God. Lord, they called them Christians first, said and it not, Lord, because they were Christ-like. Help us, Lord to be Christ-like in every area of our life. Lord, that we don't falter. Lord Jesus, help us, Father. Glorify yourself in us, Lord, and bring us forth in your righteousness, Jesus. Lord, in your precious holy name. Starting at verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe, ye believe in God, believe also in me. Hallelujah. I love that. I love that when I read it. And that's what God is saying to us. Let not your heart be troubled. It doesn't matter what's fixing to be let loose upon this old world because we serve the Most High God that holds everything in His hand. We have no reason to let our heart to fear or to be troubled. Be why? Because we believe in God. Hallelujah! And I tell you what, he'll stand holy and righteous with his people. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. You know, a lot of times people misinterpret these scriptures right here. When he's talking there in my father's house, there are many mansions. He's talking about us. Because we are the temples of the Holy Ghost. And we are mansions in God. Because we are a royal priesthood. Hallelujah! Our inheritance is a royal inheritance. Hallelujah! And he said, if, I were, if it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Hallelujah. And a lot of been preached for years that he's going to heaven to prepare a big place of glory. That place is already prepared. It's been prepared. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But he said, I go to prepare a place. The reason I'm important is that. Because it's very important. I want you to realize what he is saying. Hallelujah. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. 
that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Now, this is where the Lord is trying to enlighten his disciples. Hallelujah. Many times when the Lord spoke to his disciples, they did not understand what he was speaking to them. Hallelujah. Because they were looking and perceiving through the carnal flesh. And we cannot perceive the word of God in the carnal flesh. Hallelujah. The only way that we can receive what God is saying is through the Spirit. Hallelujah. Now listen to what he's telling. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. And how can we know the way? Right here he's telling them. He said, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He was saying to Thomas, Where I go, you may come also, but first I must go away. Hallelujah! That the Comforter can come. When we receive the Holy Ghost, it enlightens our mind, hallelujah, and our thought patterns that we can perceive what Jesus is saying here. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father except through me. He is that only door. And the only way that we can truly perceive Jesus is through the Holy Ghost. I mean, you might know of Jesus, but to really truly know him is through the Holy Ghost. That is the only way. I know of President I'll pick one at Washington. I know of him, but I don't know him. Hallelujah. What I mean by that, I do not know his mannerisms. I don't know his thoughts. I don't know his desires. I do not know his mannerisms, exactly how he feels about this or that. But when we receive the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, Jesus said, I must go away before the Comforter can come. But when the Comforter comes and lives and abides, in you, he will reveal myself unto you. Unto you. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What he was saying right there, what you have seen me do and live before you every day, this is the way. This is the life. This is the truth. He told them many days, he said, my doctrine is not my own. He said, the doctrine that I preach under you and that I teach under you is of my Father. Hallelujah. What is doctrine? It's teaching. Jesus did not come within himself. He come to do the will of the Father. The will of the Father. And he is the truth. That's the reason Jesus said, he said, Lord, sanctify them as you have sanctified me. How did the Father sanctify Jesus? Was through the truth. And that is how we are sanctified. Sanctified means a set-apart people. A purified people. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I am so thankful that the Lord prepared the way for me. Hallelujah. That I may go. Hallelujah. The way that he has showed me. The way that the road map has led me to go. Hallelujah. And that is exactly what this is. It is a road map for the children of God. To live and abide by. Hallelujah. He is the only door. The only door that a man, that mankind can get to the Father. The only doorway. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he goes on and he says, If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. What he just said to them, just like Philip asked him. He said, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus said, have I been so long with you, Philip, that you have not seen the Father? Do you not know the very words that I speak? The very works that I do are of the Father. When you seen me, you seen the Father. My Father is in me, and I'm in the Father. And He said that when the Comforter comes, 
Hallelujah, that they would be in us and we would be in them. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, the Lord is leading and guiding his people into the knowledge of the Son of God. And we cannot receive this or perceive it through the flesh. The Lord is showing us his mannerisms. He is showing us his desires. Hallelujah. His heartfelt feelings through the Holy Ghost. Through the Holy Ghost. What he's saying. Hallelujah. Live the way that I have lived before you. I am the life that you should live. I am the truth that's been manifested to you day in and day out. But if you will just get, and I'm paraphrasing right here. He said, if you will just get out of that carnal mind that you can truly see me. And I tell you what Peter did. The Father revealed unto Peter that Jesus Christ was the Holy Son of God, the living Son, the only begotten Son of the living Father. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, flesh and blood is not delivered. Had the re that you have perceived this by. But my Father, which in heaven, has revealed this unto you. Hallelujah. And this is what he's saying. He's saying to us, listen to me, and I'll reveal myself to you. Walk in me daily. Seek after me, and you shall find me. Seek me. Seek me while I may be found. This is a time that the Lord has visited in the church in such a manner to truly reveal his self unto the church. Many have known of Jesus all their life. They have grew up in church, and they known of Jesus. But truly knowing him, they do not. That's the reason people can come to church, hallelujah, and Thus hell wide open. I'm talking about sitting on the church pew, not ever missing a service, child around. Hallelujah. But their life is not measuring up, hallelujah, to the life of Christ. And only the Lord can live this life through us. It's just like I was revealing that testimony of two spirit-filled Christians that should be young childish things. It's children that gets out and hit one another and carry on and try to overpower one to the other. And why another Holy Ghost filled woman of God, an elderly woman at that, I don't care what the other sister said to her, she should not have slapped her like she did. But she lost control of her spirit. And she yielded to the flesh. And I'm not saying the other one is thoughtless either. I don't know. I don't know the particulars about it and don't want to know. But I do know that the situation was not handled correctly. Even the pastor. Even the pastor is at fault. And undoubtedly he is lacking somewhere because he should have been teaching the people that you turn the other cheek. You do not strike out by flesh. Why? Because we are striving to walk as our master walked, to live as he lived, to come forth in him, hallelujah, and be purified even as he is pure. Only the pure in heart are going to see God. Only the pure in heart. That's any of us. And if we allow things to get in our heart that is not right, it will cause us to miss out with the Lord. I do not want that I allow no man to take my crown. That's the reason I work daily. Daily. And just because I feel like my spirit is under control, I can't let up. I have got to pursue it daily. To keep my spirit where it needs to be. And believe the devil will test and try you and bring things up against you. It is what we allow ourselves to be brought into. That's the reason sometimes when I get calls and it's a flesh of a flesh nature, somebody want me to take sides with that one. I will not allow myself to be pulled up into their carnality. I'll pray for them. I said, I'll stand in prayer with you. I'll stand in prayer with you. And I do. 
I don't tell them that and then go on my way and not remember them in prayer. But I stand in prayer. I say, God, help them, Lord, to come together and be able to reason this out and work it out, Lord, according to your will, Father, that you might be glorified in those vessels. In those vessels. Hallelujah. But if I was to allow myself to get pulled up between someone, before you know it, my spirit would be all right. And I'd be taking sides with that and then win with that one. But see, I cannot allow myself to be caught up in something like that. Even what I walked through down there in Savannah, I cannot allow myself to be caught up in that. And believe me, sometimes my flesh wants to so bad, but I say, no, you're not, because I am serving the Lord Jesus Christ, and I am going to walk in His Word according to His Word. And because I take that stand with myself, with myself, I am able to control my spirit. And the Lord is making me a defense city by doing this. By doing this. And believe me, I'll probably be tested tomorrow to the next week and the years to come. The devil will send something else my way. He'll say, oh, I'll get her down. I'll get her this way. And he'll look at your weaknesses. And he'll look at what really can touch you the, the closest. Hallelujah. And he'll send it along your way. And see if he can tempt you to let go of your spirit and reveal carnal flesh. Hallelujah. I am working with God's help to mortify the deeds of this old flesh. I can't do it in myself. But I do what I can do. That the Lord will take over and do the other part. But he can't do what he needs to do until I do what I need to do. And I tell you what. We will not walk in our ministries like we need to unless we bring ourselves under subjection to the Spirit of God. And the only way, I'm telling you, the only way that this started out, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to work on bringing every thought under subjection to me. Bring every thought under subjection. And I started taking note of exactly what has been taught to me from the spirit of the devil through the spirit of flesh hallelujah and the spirit of God and anything that is of the devil and of flesh I send it to flight hallelujah I say I am not having any part with that hallelujah now you've got to go now flee hallelujah by the word of God by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and he has to go he has to go. Why? Because when I speak those words, I speak it in faith. Because I know that God's word works. Hallelujah. But the church has walked in doubt. And they're still walking in doubt. Hallelujah. But the Lord is working with each one of us and bringing us to a place. Hallelujah. That no longer are we walking in doubt. But we're walking in faith. Walking in faith. Hallelujah. And this goes on. And it says, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it suffices us. In other words, he said, it will satisfy, satisfy us. We will be satisfied, Lord, if you'll just show us the Father. Hallelujah. And Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me. They knew of Jesus. Hallelujah. They knew that he was the son of Joseph and Mary. Hallelujah. Even his own disciples that walked with him every day. Seeing him talk, seeing the power of God demonstrated right before him, they still did not know him. Hallelujah. Because they looked at him through the flesh, through the carnal eye. And we have learned through chapter 8 in Romans how the carnal mind is enmity against God. It deliberately fights up against God. It does not want to hear what God has to say. It cannot receive what God says. Hallelujah. And that's the reason that we are given the Holy Ghost, that it can enlighten. Hallelujah. Truly enlighten to us who Jesus is. And it goes on, it says, Philip, he that has seen me has seen the Father. 
And how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. That's the reason I said many times I've read that scripture. I could see Jesus sitting on that big old rock. And Philip asking him that. And he probably just, well, here, he just shook his head. He probably thought to himself, I'm just paraphrasing, probably thought to himself, Father, what am I going to have to do? What am I going to have to do that these carnal disciples are going to be able to truly see what I am here and what I am trying to reveal unto them? He probably just shaking his head. My goodness. They've seen me walk on water. They've seen me heal the blind eyes. Hallelujah. There is a place in the Bible where Jesus said, If you do not believe me for the words I speak, Believe me for the work's sake. Believe me for the work's sake. No man can do these works except the Father be with him. Hallelujah. And he was telling that to his disciples too. Believe me for the very work's sake. If you cannot receive the words that I am speaking unto you, receive it because of the very works. Hallelujah. They were there when Jesus fed the multitude hallelujah with the fishes and loaves and many followed him because of the fishes and loaves hallelujah hallelujah and what I am telling this message today is believest thou me and I want us to go to this next verse it goes believest thou not that I am in the father and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Hallelujah. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. If you can't believe me for the words that I speak, Philip, please open your eyes and see the works that are manifested to you day in and day out. And doubt in Thomas as well. Couldn't see. And he spoke in Proverbs and he spoke in parables. Hallelujah. Because it was only a certain amount of Jews that this word was going to be revealed to. But as a whole, the Jewish nation, hallelujah, their eyes were blinded and their ears Hallelujah was dumb that he hallelujah that they could not hear what the Spirit was saying at that time. Their visitation had come to them and been revealed, but yet they could not see it and they could not hear it because it wasn't given to them. That the Gentile nation could be grafted in. Hallelujah. But is the Lord going to forget them? No. Hallelujah. When the end of the Gentile age has come, and I tell you what, it's fastly approaching. Hallelujah. And when it is, that door is going to be shut. And every man is going to stand exactly how he stands before God. Right there. Hallelujah. And that's the reason I believe it's so important for us to be able to keep our spirit. What if we was to be just really manifesting ourselves in the flesh and have no control over our spirit? We'd be like a city without walls. And what if the Lord had come... Shut that door right then and there while you're in the midst of sin. You know that we would stand exactly how we stand right there. And our tree would fall exactly how we are revealing ourselves. And the Bible tells me that I am going to be judged by every word that proceeds out of my mouth. Every word. Not just some of the words that I want to pick out and say, Lord, you can judge me by this one. But he says, no. You're going to be judged by every word that proceeds out of the word of your mouth. Hallelujah. That's the reason I want to make sure that everything is under the blood. Everything. I want to live my life from minute to minute with the Lord. Hallelujah. Does it mean that I am walking in perfection? No, I'm not. But I am striving. We are striving to enter in. And if I see that I fall short, I pray all the time, Lord, reveal to me. Father, reveal it to me. Don't let me walk in it, God. But as soon as I do it, Father, let me see it. Open it to me. God, that I can get it quickly under the blood. 
because I want to be saved. I want to make it, and I want them that hear me to make it. Wouldn't it be awful, Sister Payne, for us to preach this word, to go all over the nations of the world, doing great many mighty works, delivering people from demons, healing their blinded eyes, open deaf ears, and causing the dumb to talk by the Spirit of God. And then us ourselves end up being lost because of something that we've done. Do you know that Judas is a God? Hallelujah. That the devil did not have control over him until he dipped and sucked with the Lord. And Jesus said, go and do what thou mayest. Then the Bible says the spirit of the devil entered him. Then the spirit. Hallelujah. I believe it could have been any of the twelve. But see, the Lord already knew what was setting up in Judas' heart. Because he gave him the bag, the treasury bag, and he was not handling it all along. How we see that is because through the scriptures, we see how he handled when the woman, Mary Magdalene, when she broke the alabaster box and she anointed Jesus and she cried and wept over his feet and dried her, his feet with her hair and Judas was over there demising in his heart how can she do this how can she take something that expensive see the Lord was perceiving exactly what was in his heart perceiving what Simon the man that was giving him that was feeding him that day, sitting at the table. Simon was even saying in his heart, if he truly knew who that woman was at his feet, he wouldn't let her touch him. You know, the Lord will let us perceive what has been thought. Many times the Lord will let me perceive and reveal what people are thinking. And I believe he does that because he knows I can handle it. Because I know that people have not come to a place Yet, that, that they can receive everything. And I say, Lord, just help them, Father. Because I know that they mean to do well, Father. And I know that they truly don't feel this way. But God help them to see and perceive what has been spoke to them. And the Lord does. And he does. And the Lord has set me here as a lead. I did not set myself here. And see, that's what people have got to understand. Sister Pam, what God has set you here to do, nobody else can do that. Hallelujah. Not that God ain't not going to send us help and that we'll be able to go out and come in and out. Hallelujah. But when God sends them and they receive the vision that God has placed here and that they're going to work toward it with us, hallelujah, then this work can be built up and edified in Jesus Christ. But it takes a body to work together. Not that the devil is not going to try to enter in from time to time and try to speak a spirit of doubt. Hallelujah. And see, that's what the devil wants. If he can get people to doubt, hallelujah, what God is trying to do here. If he can get them to doubt, you know what hinders? It hinders. Hallelujah. If people would just hold on long enough to see God move. And it's not going to keep him from moving because he's going to move. It'll hinder for a time. But I tell you what, Sister Pam, if his church empties out and nobody comes, God will do what he's going to do. Hallelujah. And I believe it with all my heart. Thank you, Jesus. And it goes on, it says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake verily verily I say unto you I don't know this for sure but I believe that when Jesus said verily verily it's just like saying therefore and wherefore listen to me take note of what I'm fixing to say to you because it's very important verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that I will do. 
that in the Father may be glorified in the Son. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. That is exactly what Jesus was here to do. To reveal the Father unto us. To reveal God Almighty. That we could see His mannerisms, the way He thought, the way He feels. He demonstrated it in a robe of flesh because He robed His Word in flesh and dwelt among us and lived and abided exactly how He feels. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the reason Jesus said, when you see me, you've seen the Father. Have you not seen my mannerisms? Have I not sat down and spoke my heart to you many times? But it's just like you were saying before, Sister Pam. If people don't receive it, it cannot get engrafted. And that's the reason it takes a perception. The Lord has been speaking to me all week about his people being not able to perceive what he's trying to do in the spirit. They have lost the discernment. And the Lord is trying to awaken us and stir up these gifts and callings in our lives that we can perceive and that we can discern what he is trying to do. And what he's trying to bring forth in us. Because he's, Paul said, let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. And like I've said many times, what was the mind of Christ? To do the will of the Father. What was the will of the Father? Hallelujah. To walk in his ways. Jesus said, I am the way. What way was that? The Father's way. I am the truth. What truth? The Father's truth. This is the only way that you can be sanctified is through the truth. And he said, I am the life. In other words, he said, the life that I have lived and manifested to you, that is what the Father wants you to live. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come unto the Father except through me. Hallelujah. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I will do. That will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. You know what he's saying right there? When you ask in faith, in my name. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to even please the Lord. And it also goes on and says anything that we do that is not of faith is a sin. So, if we will ask in faith, the Father will do it. Why? Because he abides in us. We abide in him. We live in him. He lives in us. He lives through us. Hallelujah. So we are living what? By faith, through faith. You know, the Lord spoke to me something so profoundly the other day. And I said, Lord, he, 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 this is what he asked me. He said, is it not just as easy for me to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or pick, rise and pick up thy bed and walk? I said, yes, Lord. Yes. Then I got to thinking. And I was pondering there just a few minutes on what the Lord had just said to me. I said, Lord, what you just spoke to me was the faith that it takes for me to receive you. That you have forgiven me of my sins is the very faith that will heal me. But you know, it seems like that we can believe. See, the Lord is saying it's just as easy. It's just as easy. When you come to me, you come to me by faith. You receive me by faith. You take on faith that I have forgiven you of your sins. Well, it takes that same measure, that same amount of faith for you to be healed. Because isn't it just as easy for me to say thy sins be forgiven me? Hallelujah. Something just as simple as that can unlock 
people's minds to be able to walk in faith for their healing. Because they're already walking in faith that their sins are forgiven. And it just clicks and say, my goodness, I have faith that I am forgiven. I have faith now to receive my healing. And I tell you what, God is revealing. He is revealing what? By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I tell you what, the Lord is wonderful. He is wonderful. And the reason I say that people truly don't receive it yet because they're not walking in the manifestations of it. When we believe something, it is manifested. It doesn't mean that we're striving to get there. I said, Lord, I know that faith is in my heart because I know, Father, by my spirit, it bears witness with your spirit that I am your child. Lord, I know that my sins are forgiven. Now, Lord, release that faith in me, God, that I will walk forth in my healing. And, Lord, I believe your word because you told me that I will walk in healing. And I believe it with all my heart. And it will come to pass. And it will come to pass. It does not mean that I do not have to go in. I've been in one of the biggest battles in the last two weeks. That I've been in a long time. I'm talking about a spiritual battle. A warfare with the devil. About my healing. About my healing. But I tell you what. I am already victorious. Through Jesus Christ. Because the victor lives in me. And that devil might as well go on. Because I stand in God's word. And I believe today. Hallelujah. Just like I did yesterday. And I will tomorrow. That Jesus Christ is my Lord, hallelujah, that he is my healer, and that he received those stripes on his back, hallelujah, and I am healed, and I'm going to keep professing it until it's demonstrated and manifested in my life, it's already come forth in a great degree, hallelujah, and I tell you, and the Lord gave me a word, because men, and I think the reason he did that, Sister Pam, hallelujah, did he give me a weapon right there I could use against the devil? Because, you know, a lot of times, I said, Lord, I know it's 